Hi guys, a few days back a viewer of mine going by the username Dylan suggested me to make a video on dual booting Manjaro Linux and Kali Linux. So now it might sound a bit weird to some of you due to the vast differences between the two. Manjaro Linux being an Arch Linux derivative with uh, basically no specific goal in mind, maybe apart from uh, being a general purpose desktop operating system, while Kali Linux on the other hand is a derivative of Debian testing with a specific goal in mind and that is cyber security, penetration testing and you know all of the things in that scope. And although Debian uh, testing is not as stable as Debian stable, the packages are more stable than that of a rolling release distribution. And I know that the sentence that I just said was very unstable as well. But basically, it just justifies the dual booting of different systems and basically for the work of uh, the user. So with that being said, this is the topic of this video. And since the video is going to be long, I have divided it into three sections and the timestamps will be in the description. So Dylan also told me some things that I'll be keeping a uh, uh, note in my mind. So the first thing is that he is already on Ubuntu. That is, he already has Ubuntu installed on his hard drive and that he is using a UEFI motherboard with the GPT partitioning scheme. So all right, uh, we just want to make sure that we are using a UEFI motherboard. I mean, we are booting in the UEFI uh, boot mode. So in order to do that, we are just going to open our terminal and then we are going to type in the following command ls sys dash firmware slash efi slash efi wars. So I get a verbose output, all right? And if you don't get this output, uh, you're probably not booting in UEFI. Uh, I'm getting this output because I am booting in UEFI, all right? So two of Dylan's notes I have already taken into consideration, being the number one being I'm already on Ubuntu, and second that I am booting in UEFI, all right? So now what we are going to do is download the ISOs. If you have already done this, you can skip this all the way to part two. All right, and in part one, basically we'll be downloading the ISOs and making the bootable USB. So I already have prepared uh, the pages here. So you can search for Kali Linux download and Manjaro Linux download, and they will lead you to these two pages. I'll just close the Google search pages. We'll download Manjaro first since that's open already. So you see that we have three official releases, XFCE, uh, KDE Plasma, GNOME, and then obviously there's the Architect, which is the command line version. So we're not taking a look into that. Apart from that, if you are wanting to not opt for these three, you can always click on the additions and come to community and you can see other desktop environments and window managers, all right? We'll stick with the uh, official release. The installation process for anyone is going to be the same, all right? So we're not going with XFCEs because uh, Kali Linux recently uh, moved from GNOME to XFCE already. So there's no point of having two similar desktop environments in one video. We'll go with KDE Plasma or GNOME. So I already have KDE Plasma downloaded on my machine over here. All right. So in order to do whatever you are selecting, just click on the uh, desktop environment of your choice. Come to download. Great. Take me to download. and download shall begin uh, there should be a prompt shortly yep so i'm going to cancel this because i already have it downloaded so this is with uh, manjaro all right kali linux what do we want to download in kali linux so you when you come to this page here you see there are a lot of options here uh, all of these options will lead you to xfce desktop environment uh, they were using gnome for some time but then they moved to xfce so you can see that uh, we have the net installer as well as the 64-bit live installer. And then this is installer 4 gigs. So uh, the live installer is what we want to download uh, because uh, I don't see the point in installing the 4 gig installer. All right, just click on that. And uh, the pop-up window will appear. Obviously, I have it downloaded here. So I'm going to cancel it anyways. And if you have it downloaded as well, you can just go ahead and skip this step. So now we have the ISOs downloaded. We can close the browser and open uh, the place where we have, I have it in this folder called ISOs. Yours will be in the downloads folder. All right, mine is cluttered. So I just didn't want to show you that. And uh, we are going to plug in our USB, USB device of minimum eight GB. Back up the data of your USB device because that's going to be destroyed anyways. So you don't want to lose them. So back it up somewhere, safe. 
Uh, my USB device right now has Arch Linux, but that is not what we are uh, wanting to do right now. We want to make the Manjaro bootable USB as well the as well as the Kali Linux bootable USB. All right. So uh, if you have two USB devices, you can use two. I only ha I am going to be using one. All right. So there's a script over here. Make bootable USB dot sh. I'm just going to open it. And I'm going to just give you the script in the description so you can just copy and paste in the text file and then just name it and then run it. So nothing fancy here. Uh, it just runs three commands and mounting your USB device and then making a file system and then making your bootable USB, all right? Uh, the only thing is that this is hard coded uh, for one USB device, SDB. So that is why you did the warning. Insert one USB device at a time only and then put this script in the same folder which has the ISO. So I have the script in the same folder which has the ISO. What I have to do here is copy and paste the name of the uh, file in front of .iso in line 34. Line 34 is this and we have .iso already here. So I'm going to come to my folder, uh, come to Manjaro, let's say, click on rename and then come to copy, copy this. We'll copy this and then what we want to do is come to the text editor and paste it in front of .iso. That's done, we can save this. So I'm assuming you're copying and pasting this whole script that I'll be giving you inside the description box. So open your terminal, uh, not like this, but right click and then open terminal so that it opens in the correct path. Mostly it will be in the downloads folder for you guys. First thing you want to do is make this file executable. So I already have made it executable, but you might not have it. So the name of the file, as you can see, is make bootable USB. So make bootable, you can hit a tab and it is executable now. So remember, this is only for one USB device at a time, all right, because that's hard coded for one USB device. So dot slash make bootable USB. It will prompt you for your password, type in your password. And then uh, type in yes, Y for yes, all right. So bootable USB is being made. Uh, currently the formatting is going on with txt4. And this will take some time. All right. So, meanwhile, if you're a Windows user, let's say you don't have, uh, let's say Ubuntu installed already and you want to do the same thing from part two and three, uh, but ignoring part one, basically you're coming from Windows and what can you do? All of that, which we have just done, you, you have to just simply go to your uh, disk management utility and check for an EFI directory. In my case, for example, it will be 100 megabytes. The size doesn't matter, but you need to have the EFI directory that confirms that your computer boots in UEFI and GPT. And once that's done, you can just see this part one, how to download the ISOs, all that stuff. Download Rufus then, and then just follow the instructions in Rufus and then make the bootable USB. This is for Linux. Uh, you don't really have to be on Ubuntu Linux. You can be on Fedora, you can be on Arch Linux maybe. But yeah, this is how you can make the bootable USB easily with the script. I'll uh, put the whole script in the description. Copy and paste uh, into a text file. Name it something easy, uh, like make bootable USB.sh. This is what I have named it. You can name it something else, but make sure to make it executable with chmod and then run the script with only one USB device at a time. All right, so this is going to take some time and I'll be back when it's done. All right, guys, so as you can see that we are done with making the bootable USB. It also reflects over here in the file browser. And meanwhile, what I did is also go ahead and create the Kali Linux USB. I'll just plug it in to show you. All right, so there it is, Kali Live. And what we can do now that we have, now that we have both the USBs plugged in, we can uh, shut down a computer. For those of you who only have one USB device, uh, you want to first uh, do this process with Kali Linux because we'll be installing that first. Uh, for those of you who, like me, have two USB devices, you can keep both of them plugged in and then I'll see you in the boot menu. All right, so we'll be installing it on this Seagate 500 GB hard disk drive. I have both the uh, USB device plugged in. All right, so guys, uh, now that we have all the things set up, let's go ahead and power on the machine. And uh, once it gets powered on, press one of the function keys shown on the screen uh, that matches with your 
laptop or motherboard manufacturer enter the boot menu like i have done over here you can see a bunch of uh, options here already which we can ignore uh, that comes from basically all the dry runs i've done so far and this is like the 12th time i'm recording this video so the thing that we should be uh, taking note of is this UA uafe hp and uafe sandisk because like i already show uh, like i already have shown you these are the brands of our USB devices. And like I also have told you, we'll be going ahead with Kali Linux first and then installing Manjaro Linux because uh, Manjaro Grub can detect Kali. And even though Kali Grub can detect Manjaro, uh, it doesn't allow Manjaro to boot. So with that being said, let's go ahead and uh, make sure UAFE SanDisk is selected. Or basically in your case, uh, the USB device which has Kali Linux uh, in it that has to be selected hit enter and we are inside the kali uh, live boot menu so let's go ahead uh, this is the live system which will boot you into the live environment but we are not interested in that right now we want to come to the installer start installer hit enter and there it is we have the debian installer right now uh, we can use our mouse to move around as well as the keyboard to move up and down and hit enter to continue all right so we have to select our language in my case it's english select our country so i'm in india uh configure the keyboard american english for me so it will detect and mount the installation media as you can see uh, Debian installer is not so intuitive, I know, but uh, if you read along uh, the things it's trying to show you, answer the questions it's asking you, you'll get through. So that's the purpose of this video anyways. All right, so now we'll be prompted to connect to our network. So it will check for both the wired and wireless connections. And then uh, if you have wired it works out of the box if you have wireless you'll be prompted to connect it manually by typing your password all right so over here it says some of your hardware needs non-free files to operate and basically it's asking for this regulatory db we don't really need it so we are going to uh, use the arrow key or you can just come here and click on no click on continue so now it's checking for uh, ethernet and then your wi-fi and then i don't have an ethernet connection i have wi-fi so i will go with wlan 0 eth 0 is if you have ethernet so it'll try to establish a connection out of the box automatically but wlan 0 we are going with Wi-Fi and most of you also would have Wi-Fi so click uh, so hit enter and then se uh, select your network SSID basically the name of the Wi-Fi network I'll go with this one this is mine type in your password when you're prompted to once you've uh, clicked on once you have clicked on enter or hit enter uh, it will attempt to exchange the keys with the access point and if you have typed in the correct password, it should show that it has been done successfully, just like this. So now it will attempt IP version six auto configuration. Uh, with DHCP, it's basically trying to also get something with uh, the wired connections as well. Now we need to go ahead and uh, type in a host name. So host name is something, you know, when you open a terminal in any Linux distribution, you have a username that is something and then there is a host name so it's uh, when you open the terminal you always see username at the rate host name so right now it's asking us for the host name we'll keep it kali no issues with that now it's asking us for the domain name so i uh, do not have any domain name and i don't think majority of you unless you are working in in an enterprise so we don't have domain names so we can leave that blank now it starts asking us uh, to type in a full name. You can do that, but I'll just type in my name, YouTube name, Demon Killer. 
and it says that do you want to use the username uh, so basically if i go back if you type in something like this let's say this with a capital d so it's always going to make sure everything comes in the unix format and that is uh, everything is in small letters so if you hit continue you see even though i had capital d in the uh, full name it still converts it into the unix name on unix format right so click on continue Type in a very strong password, memorable also. I've done that. Click on continue. This this password that we entered is both for the user as well as the root. So anything you're doing with sudo access, uh, that's the password, what you entered. So now comes the most important part of this uh, installation. We'll be uh, partitioning the disk. 500 GB Seagate uh, hard disk drive, I've already told you that. Right, so we have four options here, guided, use the entire disk, uh, set up LVM, encryption. Uh, we're not going with uh, Luke's uh, encryption right now. We'll just do a standard installation. And why we're not using guided? Because we want to make the partitions ourselves so that we can uh, make space for Manjaro later on as well. So now come to manual. Over here, you can see that we have three drives. SDA is our 500 GB uh, SATA hard disk drive. SDB is our 15, 16 gig SanDisk uh, USB device, which we don't want to touch because that's where Kali is booting from. And SDC in my case, because I have two USB devices, is the seven, eight gig uh, HP, which has Manjaro. I already have plugged that in. Uh, well, if you, do, if you have not plugged that in, you won't see this SDC. Uh, you will see SDA and SDB. SDB again, the USB device we don't want to touch. Uh, we want to touch this. So we are going to, uh, as you can see, the partitions are already created here. And the reason for that is, I like I said, this is like the 12th time I'm recording this video and a lot of dry runs also in between them. So I've already installed, done this whole procedure of uh, dual booting Kali and Manjaro. Uh, what we are going to do here, and, and in your case, actually, you must have some uh, other operating system, like in Dylan's case, it's Ubuntu, right? So we want to delete all the partitions here. So you want to make sure one, so one, two, five, six, four, three, we want to get rid of them. So we have partition one selected, uh, come here and del select delete partition. Okay, that will be converted to free space. As you can see, 500 megabytes, 50 GB, ext4 partition number two, click on that, delete the partition. Now I'll just use the keyboard. Now you got the idea how to do it. So enter, delete the partition, uh, 187 gigs, enter, delete the partition, swap, 8 gigs, delete the partition. And finally, we have 200 gig ext4, partition number three, enter, delete the partition. All right, so we have 500 gig uh, hard disk space free, of, uh, free to make our partitions here and there. Uh, and we are going to be making the partitions for Kali Linux first. Obviously, because we are inside the Kali Linux bootable USB. So click on continue or press enter and then create a new partition. The first thing we want to do here is create, because we are booting in UEFI and we are uh, using the GPT partitioning scheme. The first thing we want to do here personally is create a ES, ESP. It's called EFI system partition, ESP, all right? It's 500 megabytes is fine. And the reason for that is there's no reason actually. I, I just kept doing these dry runs then I realized that 200, 300 is a bit less. Uh, so 500 is what we're going to go with. This comes with thorough testing, actually. So continue. This is going to be at the beginning of this space. And uh, we're go not going to use this as the XT4 because this is UEFI, EFI system partition, ESP. All right. And because the bootloader is going to be installed on this, the bootable flag is going to be on by default. Uh, we are done with this, done setting up the partition, click on continue. One megabyte free space, you can ignore that, all right? So we have 500 megs of ESP, which is EFI system partition, bootable flag is on. And now we have uh, around 499.6 gigs of free space. You're going to create new partition, root partition for Kali Linux. I'll go ahead with 50. Okay, so numlock is on 50. And we can always close the insert, yeah. So 50 gigs for root partition, uh, this can vary depending on your scenario. So since Dylan told me that he is uh, going to wipe off Ubuntu, 
uh, it's not a scenario of triple boot this is a dual boot uh, go with 50 this is the minimum i recommend and uh, see in, in kali linux if you are installing other packages software through apt or uh, yeah through apt because ppas are not available in kali so assign something more like 100 gigs or 70 80 gigs or it all depends on what you're going to be doing with kali linux uh, i'm just showing you how to create the root partition 50 gigs is what i'm assigning here beginning of this space and yes, format it. We want to keep the partition formatted. The mount point is going to be root, which is the slash, all right? And then done setting up this partition. So we have root partition as partition two, and uh, it's 50 gigs. Free space. Create a new partition. Uh, now we are going to be creating the home partition, actually. What do we do with the home partition? We need, uh, in home partition, basically, you just store all your files and data so you would need that in kali right so i'll i'll give it 200 and also take the 0.6 with it so 200.6 gb continue this is going to be at the end of the space the reason for that is we want to keep the home partition a bit separate on the disk continue uh ext4 our mount point is going to be slash home all right and we're done setting up this partition so I, I hope you are now getting up, uh, getting the uh, gist of what we are trying to do. All right, so we have partition three, partition two, partition one. Now one more partition that we have to create uh, is the swap partition because this is a DDR3 uh, machine. And it has, although it has eight gigs of RAM, uh, it's good to, you know, because RAM is expensive. So what swap does is basically assign virtual memory. So in case you run out of RAM due to any reason, uh, you have virtual memory to accommodate obviously it's not as good as physical memory but still it, it, it can compensate for some purpose all right so uh, we have 249 gigs free space click enter create new partition we are going with 8 gigs here because that's the amount of ram i have installed uh so that's what you should do uh if you have 4 gigs assign 4 gigs if you have 8 gigs assign 8 gigs all right click on continue this is also going to be at the end of the uh at the end of the disk, all right. So we are not going to use this as ext4. We are going to use this as swap area. We are done with that. Done setting up the partition. And now you see a very peculiar thing has happened. The free space that is left is sandwiched between partition one, two, and three and four. So partition one and two are. Let's just quickly revise what we have done here. One MB free space. Ignore. Partition one is our 500 meg ESP partition, which will contain the bootloader. Bootable flag is on. 50 gig is our root partition that will create the Linux file system. And uh, anything you install later on uh, will be installed to this root partition. And anything that the installer will install right now will be installed on the root partition as well. Free space, I already told you it's sandwiched. The reason for that is partition four and three are at the end of the space. What I mean by space is the disk, the amount of space we have. Partition one and two are at the beginning while partition three and four are at the end. And, and this will be a bit more clear when we install Manjaro. Uh, if you have any doubts regarding the, regarding the partitioning, you can always ask me in the comment section, all right? Partition three is our home partition where we store all our data, music files, everything of that sort. And uh, partition four is our eight gig swap memory, virtual memory, all right? We're done with this. You don't want to touch SDB or SDC. Free space, remember, is sandwiched between one, two, three, and four. Click on continue. Sorry, not continue. We want to come down and select finish partitioning and write changes to this. Now click on continue. It is going to tell us that it is making the partitions on SDA. Yes, that is right. And then it's creating two partitions, uh, ext4, swap ext4. And then uh, partition one is the uh, system partitions. So let me check. Why is it not being shown here? All right, it, it will not bother because it knows that we are creating the partition. Click on yes. We want to write the changes to the disk. Ideally, it should also show up here that we are creating partition one as a ESP, EFI system partition. Click on continue. So now it's uh, doing all the formatting. So root has been formatted with 
txt4 now home is being formatted with txt4 so app has no file system on it because that's virtual memory and uh, i think esp also has been formatted with fat32 and now this is going to take some time So at this moment, uh, it's all about uh, letting the installer do what it's supposed to do because if you have set up the partitions correctly, you shouldn't be bothered right now. So I'll be back when this is done. All right, so we are done with uh, the system installation. It's asking us, do you want to use a network mirror? Uh, this option is solely up to you, but I will not use a network mirror. So click on no. Now it's installing the bootloader on the EFI system partition ESP. So you just saw that it said uh, looking for other operating systems. So right now there are no other operating systems on the system right now. All right, and then this is the uh, second phase of the installation, which takes some time actually. So all your locales will be generated here, all the username, password, everything that we said beforehand will be done here. And then uh, all the other peripheral stuff will be done here. So this takes some time, especially on slower and older machines like this particular test bench on which I'm installing right now. So it will take some time. So this one, Kali finish install takes the most time actually. And uh, there it is. We have uh, successfully installed Kali Linux. It's time to boot into the new system. And meanwhile, we need to uh, unplug the SanDisk USB device, which has Kali Linux in my case. Uh, in your case, you need to uh, remove the Kali Linux USB device. Click on continue. Uh, once this is done, let me go ahead and remove the USB device. You can remove it right now or so I'll just remove it. There it is, the SanDisk USB device. So no issues with uh, removing it right now because everything that uh, has to be installed is already there in the root directory. And there it is. Uh, so we have uh, installed Kali Linux. Now the computer will reboot and then press the uh, boot menu key which I showed you at the start of the video you come to the boot menu again you see some changes here first thing is that we have our uh, HP USB device which is selected right now and then you have Kali Linux uh, earlier like when I booted you had Manjaro as you saw Manjaro as well because that was dual booted with Kali Linux right now Manjaro is not there that's why it's not visible here but uh, Kali Linux is installed all right uh, in this P4 hard disk drive so that's why we see Kali Linux, now we need to boot into Manjaro. So UEFI HP, that's my uh, USB device which has Manjaro. If you only have one USB device, now go ahead to the start of the video. In part one, follow the whole, run the script again, and then make the Manjaro USB, boot into, uh, put it in your, plug it into your device, enter the boot menu, come here, hit enter. And we have Manjaro uh, live boot menu. We have two options here, boot Manjaro with open source drivers, boot, boot Manjaro with proprietary drivers, proprietary drivers, all right? So a big note on this, what should you choose? So if you have an Intel CPU with an iGPU, you should go ahead with open source drivers because I never had any problem, any driver issues with Intel. I've been using Linux for the past five, six years and Intel machines, Intel CPUs never gave me any issues. If you are on AMD, CPU and you have uh, AMD GPU or uh, NVIDIA GPU or if you have an Intel CPU but with NVIDIA GPU basically if you have any NVIDIA product go ahead with the proprietary drivers because open source drivers don't really work with NVIDIA stuff uh, as well as AMD as well so if again Intel CPU with iGPU go ahead with open source uh, Intel CPU with AMD GPU or NVIDIA GPU or 
uh, AMD CPU with AMD NVIDIA GPUs. Go ahead with proprietary. In my case, I have uh, Intel with iGPU. So I'll go ahead with the open source drivers. So this will take some time to, because my this is a DDR3, like I said already. Okay. So welcome to Manjaro Linux. System D messages right now. All right, so now it's going to start SDDM and will be auto logged in, I suppose. Yes, we are being auto logged in. There it is. So now that we are inside Manjaro, we can get rid of the camera. I just turned off the welcome message, by the way, but uh, I'm going to connect to internet and download the screen recording software so that we can follow along more clearly. All right, so now we are recording uh, with the screen recorder. Uh, what you want to do once you're booted into Manjaro is install Manjaro. Click on Man install Manjaro Linux. Uh, Kalamara's installer will come. Uh, so wait for this to load. Meanwhile, you can select your language. Yes, so mine is American English, like I already told you in the Kali Linux installation. Select your language over here. Click on next. Select your uh, time zone. Mine is Kolkata in India. Click on next. Come to your keyboard layout. My keyboard layout is English US. Uh, you can recheck with the visual here. Next, manual partitioning. Obviously, please also go ahead and check the disk. We are uh, using UEFI with GPT partitioning scheme. It's clearly stated here. We don't want to install alongside because uh, the way we have created partitions will not be, uh, the, I don't think the installer will be able to detect. We don't want to replace, we don't want to erase disk, we don't want to, we want to manual partitioning. By the way, uh, SDA1 is our FAT32 EFI system, SDA2 is Kali Linux, as you can see, Kali, GNU, Linux, rolling, all right. This uh, black block is our free space, SDA4 is our swap area, SDA3 is our Kali Linux home partition, all right, we're good to go. This is some random free space, one megabytes. We'll see further in the partitioning. Click on next. Our partition uh, uh, partitions are visible here inside our disk. Again, make sure the disk is selected. Uh, the graph is also here. So again, we'll see SDA1 is FAT32, this one. SDA1, SDA2 is this one. Kali Linux uh, root partition. SDA3 is the Kali Linux home partition. SDA4 is our uh, swap partition. And uh, free space, like I said, sandwiched between one, two, three, and four. All right. What we are going to do here, first things first, we need to make sure that this is bootable for Manjaro as well. So make sure SDA1 is selected. We want to make uh, tell the Calamaris installer that please install uh, the Manjaro grub in that particular directory as well, which already has Kali Linux uh, bootloader. So now you want to come to the mount point select slash boot slash EFI. The flag is boot already. It's not bios.grub because we are using, uh, you, we are booting in UEFI mode with GPT partitioning scheme, all right? So uh, mount point is slash boot slash EFI. Uh, flag is boot, click on okay. It's reflecting over here as well. Don't want to touch, we don't want to touch SDA2 and SDA3. SDA4, we want to use a swap. Edit, keep. Okay, so it's going to be used as swap, SDA4. Over here, we have free space, 224.5 gigs. All right, let's go ahead and create some space. Uh, so it all depends again on your scenario. We'll create the root partition first. So 50 gigs is somewhat 50, I think, 51, uh, 712. We can always go ahead and check with KCAL, the calculator. So 50 multiplied by 1024, it's 51200, not 700. 51200, all right, 50 gigs exact. Uh, file system is ext4, mount point is going to be root. You don't need to put any flag here, although there is a root flag over here. Click on OK. We have a new partition over here uh, in red, this one. This is our root partition, all right. So this is Kali root, this is Manjaro's root. Remaining free space, we are going to create Manjaro's home. All right, so create, click on create, use all of this. 
partition type is GPT, obviously. Sorry, this one GPT. File system is ZXT4 and uh, mount point is slash home. No flags here, okay? No flags here, even though there's no option. So, no flags here. Mount point is home. Click on OK. So, let's revise what we have. We are creating four partitions here again. Uh, you can see it's all reflecting on the graph. So, we uh, told the Calamares installer that we also want to use SDA1 for the Manjaro bootloader as well. Uh, mount point is slash boot slash EFI. Already formatted in FAT32. We don't want to reformat it. Please remember that we don't want to reformat it. We just want to use it uh, as it is. And this is the case when you are also dual booting with Windows, all right? You don't want to reformat SDA1. So, right? Keep it. Don't format. Don't, don't do this. Keep it. That's it. All right. SDA2 is Kali Linux uh, root partition. Don't want to touch that. New partition that we have created is our root partition for Manjaro. That's uh, reflecting in red. Also, can see here 50 gigs exact. Orange or yellow. It's orange, right? Uh, that is home partition, 174.5 gigs exact. SDA4, as it was already created, is uh, our, what is that? Swap partition, all right? SDA3 is the home partition for Kali Linux, all right? And this one megabyte free space is something that we can ignore. We are done with the partitioning, guys. We can just go ahead and click next. Type in your credentials. I'm just going to do that quickly. Uh, Manjaro, let's say. Again, a very memorable and strong password. I'm going to use the same password uh, for the... Okay, uh, in, in Kali Linux, uh, we didn't have an option to choose uh, different passwords for the administrator as well as the user. Here, we do have the option to choose different passwords or just use this and use this password for both. So click on next. Office Suite, do we need Office Suite? Yes, you need Office Suite. So you can go ahead and select LibreOffice, FreeOffice, depending on what... Or your workflow is i'm not going to select any office suite right now because to speed up the installation basically click next shows all the summary that we already have discussed we can close this all right so i don't think i have to tell anything over here it all says that in verbose as well click on install click on install now and manjaro uh, installer calamaris will install manjaro for you alongside kali linux and our dual boot will be uh created or our dual boot will be successful so i'll be back when this is done this takes some time all right so i'll be back when this is done all right so it's done uh so it tells us do we want to restart our system right now yes you can restart your system but the thing is you when you restart the system right now you won't be able to see the uh, grub menu first of all which shows kali linux and manjaro as well so we're not going to do that we're just going to shut down the computer and then once we shut down, uh, we are also going to remove the USB device. Uh, so then once we reboot, uh, once we press the power on button after shutting down, then we'll be able to see the uh, changes that are being reflected. So right now I'll just go ahead and copy the screen recording files. And once that's done, we'll shut down. All right, files are copied. So now we can go ahead and shut down. As for you, you just have to shut down directly. You don't have to copy anything. Uh, so there it is, system is down. Now let me check, let me check, uh, please come on, yeah, clear now. Now we are going to reboot or press the power machine, power button again. And we should uh, positively see the new grub menu of Manjaro, there it is. We have Manjaro Linux and Kali Linux perfectly dual booting. If you had run the reboot option directly, then you, would have, you wouldn't have seen it on the spot immediately like we see here over here. Uh, so always shut down and then reboot. So there it is, guys. We have uh, successfully dual booted Manjaro Linux and Kali Linux. Uh, all right, so you can always... Uh, I'll make another video on how to customize this further, remove the Manjaro icon if you want to. But right now, I think this uh, already serves the purpose of the video. Let's go ahead and boot. So Manjaro Linux already is booting, obviously, because this is the Manjaro group. Let's go ahead and check if Kali Linux is booting or not. Oh yes, it's booting. We can see the Kali Dragon or whatever it is. I think it's a, it's a dragon. So it's booting basically. Uh, our video is successful. Uh, our operations are successful. We have successfully dual booted uh, Manjaro Linux and Kali Linux. We'll wait for this to boot because I just want to show you uh, the file system actually. So we'll wait for this to boot. 
There it is. We have, uh, I think this is light DM. Yes, this is light DM because uh, XFC, right? So uh, type in our username that we had set, password that we had set, very memorable and oh, sorry, oh, very hard password that we had set that no one can crack. Uh, I'm, I'm just giving out poor jokes over here. But <laughs> yeah, we have Kali Linux. Uh, the light DM wallpaper hasn't gone yet. This is not the wallpaper you should get. By the way, we'll wait for the whole thing to boot. Yeah, there it is. We have Kali Linux booting. Uh, what I wanted to show you is, you can see the disks are over here. Let's open, is this the file browser? Which is the file browser? Let me see. File, file manager, XFCE, right? Yeah, I keep forgetting it's XFCE. So this is our home directory of Kali Linux. And let's see the properties. It is uh, 182 gigs. All right. Remember what we had said. 182 gigs. Let's go ahead and check our Manjaro. So you need to type in your Kali Linux password. All right. This is our Manjaro. Uh, I think this is our Kali. Uh, this is our file system for Kali. This is our file system for Manjaro. And this is, oh, that's the USB device, by the way. This is the volume. So obviously it's not authenticated. That's why you are not able to see it. But uh, once you boot into Manjaro and then see, you can see Kali Linux files as well. So that is, that is, that it is, guys. Or I'm probably screwing up things, but there it is, guys. We have successfully dual booted Kali Linux and Manjaro Linux. Like the video, please do subscribe. And uh, thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a nice day. By the way, if you have watched the video till this part, you know that I do videos on request, Linux videos on request. So if you have uh, any requests like Dylan, go ahead and uh, tell me in the comment section. So again, please subscribe if you like the video. A lot of effort has gone into making this. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a nice day.